Hello there, Year 6 artists. We're going to be working on welcome, making some sculpture. Using words. And when we use words in art, it's called text art. So I'm going to explain to you a bit about text art. So the first artist we're going to look at is Bob and Roberta Smith, which is this man here. He likes to come up with slogans, with sentences, which explain something that he's passionate about or something he feels about, like this one. All schools should be art schools. Well, an artist would say that, would they? And this one here, art makes children powerful, which is something I do agree with. He comes up with these slogans and instead of just writing them on a piece of paper, he turns them into artwork. He paints in these very strong colours and then these go up in galleries or sometimes he takes them on protest marches, but he creates his text art where he uses statements. Now another artist who uses text art is a man called Barry Anthony Feenan. He is a self-taught artist from Manchester, born here, and he creates these large pictures sometimes and sculptures he also makes using words. Now he has learning difficulties and so quite often his words are misspelt but actually that really adds something to them. It's not meant to be an English essay, it's art. So as I say he paints and also sculpts. Here's one that he did where he made clay bricks and then he scratched words into them Again, it doesn't matter that it's misspelt. It's about a feeling he's creating. Now, of course, text artists don't just work in English. This is an example of a text artist um, called Shizuka Greenblatt, who um, uses Japanese characters. She's Japanese herself, and she paints the Japanese words, or Japanese characters as they're called, in what is called an abstract expressionist style, where she's trying to capture the feel of the word. It's not just having it written in a book. It's about trying to capture a feeling about it. And that's what her paintings are about. Those words and trying to express their meaning. Another artist that works in a la language other than English um, is called Doris Bita. She was born in Iraq and lives in America. And she works in Arabic and she creates both paintings and sculptures um, out of Arabic script and Arabic words. Now, a huge amount of her artwork explores uh, her favourite word, which is the word and um, in Arabic. And she likes it because of how it looks. She says it looks like a comma and a cradle and it floats. And she likes the meaning of it as well. The, the idea of and being as well as there's more of something and, and, and. And she likes to explore this one word over and over again. Now, another artist that works in Arabic is called Sabah Abili. And he is also Iraqi. He's an Iraqi British artist. And he uses poetry. Um, he creates paintings and sculptures using whole poems. So not like Doris Bita, who has one word. He has whole sentences that he turns into these beautiful abstract sculptures. Again, you're not meant to read it anymore as the poem. You're just He's just trying to capture the feel in his artwork. Now, another artist, we're going back here now to the um, what's called the Greek alphabet or what what our words are made of out of it in English. And this is Fletcher Benton, and he's made a sculpture for every letter of the alphabet. Um, some of these are really quite huge, but again, these are abstract. He's not just made a letter, he's thought about the form. You can see here the letter B, but it's turned into something else. He's turned it into an interesting shape. We're now looking at Jenny Holzer. She's a famous text artist. She projects words onto buildings using light and she builds light sculptures using these um, sort of message boards you might have seen in shops or restaurants where they run the messages along. Well, she creates sculptures using these and she has her words running across those. Now, another artist who uses light here is Stephanie S um, Sarah Lifschwitz. Now, she is an American artist who uses neon. You can see her here in her studio making a letter out of very thin tubes of glass. Then a gas is pumped through this and electricity connected and it creates this. You've probably seen these in shops and again, restaurants and, and big cities and things where you have these 
lit up signs, but she is saying something with her. So she's not saying buy this. She's telling us how she feels uh, in her artwork. Now, another artist that does text art um, is a man called Steve McQueen. He is an award-winning artist. He's also an award-winning film director. He's won an Oscar. Here he is holding his Oscar. And he has got some artwork in the Whitworth Art Gallery. And a piece he's got there is called Remember Me, which is all about remembering somebody he's lost. And he uses this neon again to create these signs. And another artist that uses neon, and again, someone you can see at the Whitworth Art Gallery, is called Wakas Khan. Now, he has created some beautiful sculptures out of neon using the word welcome in Urdu. And not only can you find his artwork in the Whitworth, but you can also find it at Manchester Museum and at the Manchester City Art Gallery as well. And the idea of this is you have them across these different museums, connecting and linking the three venues with a warm greeting to people across the city that everybody is welcome and we are going to be creating artwork about everybody being welcome too so hello let me show you how we're doing the artwork so everyone's going to have words and the word is welcome and they're in all different languages mine is in arabic i've got here because you've been looking at egypt arabic is the uh, official language of egypt so i'm using that but you've got different worksheets you might also want to have a ruler and a pencil but you'll definitely need black card and a scissors and what you're going to start off by doing is splitting up the word because we want to make it bigger than we've got it on the piece of paper here. And I'm just going to start with any of the letters that I fancy. I'm going to start with this one at the end here. And I just want to start shaping that letter. And I've got the number two there, but it's not the two. You sort of try and match up and think about, right, what does that shape look like? And you just start thinking of it, not as a word, but as shapes. And what I did is I also decided just to sort of tick things off as I did them, because sometimes you want to do something in order, but actually it doesn't work on that piece of paper. It wastes all that piece of uh, resource there, the, the paper. So I'm just sort of taking shapes and thinking, oh, that'll fit onto there, that'll fit onto there. And I'm breaking it up. Now, some of you, because certain languages, the words are all connected together. Um, I'm thinking of some Nepalese. That's a word that's uh, letters that's all connected together in a word. And so you might find that you want to keep some of your letters connected. And that's fine. But the idea is, is just to start thinking of these as being shapes rather than letters and rather than words. This is the idea of it being abstract so we're just thinking of it as shapes and you can see here that I'm just drawing this out I've got two sheets of cards so far I'm probably going to need three sheets of cards so I think um, yeah I'd, I'd suggest that you each have three pieces of the black card and you can see there I'm just working out which bits I've got left to do so as I say you could either draw a little line through a letter when you've done it or you can tick it off like I'm doing and then I'm just doing my last one here, which is that uh, really interesting shape at the end. Now, some of you may well be able to speak Arabic um, and or read it. So you'll be able to see that this is the word welcome. But I think it's really interesting that um, some of you are going to be working on languages that you absolutely have never spoken or, or heard said to you. Um, and that would be really interesting to do that. So once you've drawn out all your letters, you cut them out. Um, you need to be careful with your scissors. Um, there'll be bits where you need to cut out the inside, in which case you just slightly fold your card and do a little snip. Or you could use um, the knife that you've been trained to use when you were doing um, your design technology if you really want to. But I just used a pair of scissors. And where I needed to cut inside, I just did, made a little snip, made a fold, made a snip and then put my um, scissors inside and that worked fine. So it's really important that you keep your letters safe as you go. Put any scrap card to one side uh, and make a pile of that so it doesn't get mixed in with your letters because we want it to be based on these these this word welcome, even if you're not going to be able to read it as if it's a word in a book. We want it to have each of those letters in. So make a pile of any scrap and make a pile of all your cut out letters. Uh, nearly finished there. And really 
this is where you want to get to by the end of the lesson. If you can get further, that's great. Um, but I'm going to stop this part of the video just at, at this point here. Um, and there'll be part two that you can watch afterwards if you get further than this, or you can carry on with your lesson, um, your next lesson, looking at that film. So there you go. I've made all my word welcome.